We know that violas have been made as early as the 1500s. They have been called clumsy to play and awkward and uncomfortable to write for. Um, viola, violists have also been called um, violinists that weren't good enough to continue on violin. Um, however, this is, this is completely untrue. Um, as the viola is um, slightly bigger than the violin, has a different tone, but in, in the hands of a good player can, uh, can produce a darker, richer um, tone than the violin, and it's, it's quite beautiful. Uh, but since it's not as low as the cello, it, it has an awkward um, spot in the, the spectrum of orchestral string sounds because uh, it's not low enough to really play the bass notes, even though it does have the history of playing bass notes when there was nothing else to play those notes. Um, but it is, it is a beautiful instrument, and um, it, is, it is also uh, it's bigger than the violin but smaller than the cello, so it doesn't go on the ground. It, you, it's, it's held up on your neck with a, uh, a chin rest, um, just like the violin. Uh, it's tuned uh, differently. It's tuned in fifths rather than uh, fourths like the violin, and it's, it's tuned like a cello, just higher. Um, and uh, it, um, it didn't start getting good parts. It, it was around the 18 to 1900s when composers started realizing that it really did have a beautiful tone and that uh, there was a way to fit it into the orchestra, um, the string orchestra, uh, without um, getting in the way of the violin or cello or bass. Um, and composers started writing for it more. And something that... Um, a lot of people don't know is Bach and Mozart were both accomplished violists. It just didn't come out until later um, that the viola, you know, was was a great instrument to write for and to use in music.